Welcome to TPM's 3-Minute Thursday. Today we'll see how to easily configure your weldment design. Our example is a simple wooden workbench. It was started using the Wicked Fast Weldments technique described in a previous 3-Minute Thursday and featured on the SolidWorks tech blog. Our goal is to set up this design so we can have various working heights and accommodate different widths and depths. The overall design will remain the same, so this makes using configurations a great choice. Configurations can be set up and controlled using either SOLIDWORKS tables or Excel-based design tables that are embedded into the SOLIDWORKS file. The fastest way is with SOLIDWORKS tables, but design tables offer more advanced capabilities. For example, the design table can be set to prevent users from changing dimensional values that are controlled in the table. This is a nice option to help avoid mistakes. Choose to start with the method that best meets your needs. You can always switch later on. Before we go any further, I'd like to point out some document-specific settings that are very important when we're talking about configuring a weldment. By default, SOLIDWORKS is set to automatically create a derived configuration when you create the weldment feature in a part. This is designed to enable management of the weldment and machine configurations of the design. By default, it creates as machine configuration description and adds a new derived configuration labeled with as welded for the description. The purpose is to suppress machine features in the as welded configuration to document the state of the design prior to post welding machining operations. If you prefer not to use this method, you can disable this under options, document properties, weldments, create derived configurations prior to creating the weldment feature for the part. For a long-term disable, resave the part template since this is a document-specific setting. For simplicity in this example, I've disabled the derived configs. Configuring weldments works just like configuring other SOLIDWORKS parts. We identify the parameters that will vary between the different configurations, and the best practice is to go ahead and rename those dimensions and features for easy identification. Then we use either configure feature or configure dimension to work with the SOLIDWORKS tables or we use insert tables design table to work with design tables. Even if you plan to use a design table, sometimes it's faster to start with SOLIDWORKS tables and create the configurations than use auto create to generate the design table. In our example, we're interested in the height, width, and depth of the work surface. First, I'll rename the dimensions that control these variables. This can be done from the property pane, selecting the dimension, or the modify dialog box. Next, to make the selection of the dimensions easy, I'll turn on the display of all dimensions from the right click menu of the annotations folder. Next, I'll use the control key to select all three dimensions and right click and choose configure dimensions. Now it's simply a matter of filling in the table with the names of the configurations I want to create and the appropriate values. Optionally, I'll give the table a name and click Save. This allows me to get back to the table later on. When I click OK, the configurations are created according to the variable values that I entered. If I wanted to configure some features in the same table, I would have simply double-clicked the feature in the Feature Manager while the SOLIDWORKS table was open, and then checked or unchecked to suppress or unsuppress the feature for each configuration. If you decide later on that you want to configure features, you can either right-click and configure feature, or you can open the table and add to it. You can even save multiple tables if you like. This is different for design tables where you can only have one design table per SOLIDWORKS file. Using this process, you can very quickly configure many variations of your weldment designs. Thanks for watching TPM's 3-Minute Thursday.